Yes, if Allah has granted you protection, you will always be protected. May Allah grant us goodness. There are people amongst us and I'd like to hope that the bulk of us seated here, pure good people by the will of Allah, you know how difficult it is to remain on that path. You know how easy it is to sin. Easier to Today sin it is than it is to abstain from it. Allahu Akbar. It is easier to abandon your hijab than it is to don it. It is easier to leave your salah than it is to fulfill it. That is because the environment has made it so difficult to engage in that which is correct. But my brothers and sisters, this is why I say do not delay nikah. It's not just my statement. It is a teaching that has come to us from the best of creation. Don't delay it. And at the same time, do not make it difficult in any way. We already spoke about the mahar, the dowry or whatever else it is. Either way, don't be too demanding. And do not become a person who really makes it tough on their sons and daughters to get married. Because in that particular case, we will be held accountable in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why is it that you as a parent did this to your own daughter? You doomed her, you punished her. And this is what you did to your son. You made him, you, you really made him leave the deen in totality. It brings me to one example, living example, where there was a young boy whose father was being so tough with him that, listen to this. He wanted to marry someone who was ready to revert. So his father told him, no, not over my dead body. What am I going to tell my friends and society, my brothers and my sisters, my this, my that? Brother, Izza is from Allah. Your status is from Allah. If you had embraced this, it was going to be much better. So you can explain to your friends and your family, look, you know, I tried my best, but today's society, you know, sometimes the children are doing their own thing and we have to try our best to make the most of what it is and to guide them as best as possible. And, you know, we will see how best they can manage. But instead of that, this father chose to say over my dead body. So what did the son do? He asked for help from some of the scholars and so on. And sometimes there is a limited amount of help you could actually offer because if a man is being stubborn, you cannot really win. So after some time, he converted and left the fold of Islam and gone. Why? Because to him, he, he, the child was lost and the father is still proud of his action. I don't mind if he became a non-Muslim, but at least nothing happened against my will. And he told his family members, you know, uh, the, you, your children, if they want to do the same thing, you should also engage in this type of thing. How? The man, the woman was ready. So I had an opportunity to address this young boy. And when I spoke to him, he told me something that is really a question of the age. When I say question of the age, I mean, sometimes the mind starts asking these questions. He said, you know, this woman is such a good woman that I married. She has so many good characters and conduct. She told me I'm ready to do anything. You know, I explained to her about the little I know about Islam and she was ready. And then what happened is when my father and my parents said no and everybody disagreed and they, you know, the mother, he says, my mother didn't really mind, but she has to follow what my father says. So after some time, I, they questioned me, her parents to say, look, we were all okay for our daughter to, you know, to enter the fold of Islam. Now, if, he, if she is not going to enter the fold of Islam, then why don't you enter our faith? So he said, yeah, it makes sense. You see, he said, yeah, it makes sense. If, we, if they refuse, I, I will not refuse you. People are not refusing. So he says that is what made him turn. Now look at this. The young boys of today, this is the logic they are using. They will not tell you Islam is correct and Islam believes in all the previous messengers and Islam Allah is one. Even the father perhaps doesn't read Salah correctly, but he was proud with his action. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive that man. Really, we tried very hard, but to be honest with you, it is only Allah who can bring people back. That's why I say it is foolish. Sometimes you might lose your child totally. Rather you lose them 20%. Allahu Akbar. Like I said, you know, moments ago, and this is very true. I've said it here in Colombo in the past and I want to repeat it. We have instances where people come and say, you know, Sheikh, there is a jinn. My daughter has a jinn. You say, okay. So the daughter says, I see stars at night. I hear voices. You know, this is what happens when I go this way. I see a shadow. I this, that happens, that happens. I know default. This girl could not marry the man she wanted to marry. And so she is seeing stars because now she's not eating. Now she's not drinking. Now she's seeing things. Now ever her life is coming to a mess and so on. Or sometimes it's connected to diet. Diet meaning 
you know, because someone told her you're too fat, you know, you're not good looking. So she stops eating. So there is no protein, no minerals, no vitamins, no nothing in the body. So she starts seeing stars. The blood pressure is low and she starts, you know, so you tell her two, two or three things. Firstly, you say, you know, jinn does not like person who is very strong, you know, good, you know. The hadith says, a believer who is strong and strong both, meaning in your belief and even physically, is more loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than one who is weak in belief and weak physically. Intentional physical weakness is something that is wrong. Do you know that? If you are physically weak and you are doing nothing about it, that is wrong. Islamically also it is wrong. So anyway, you tell them to have their dairy products and their red meat and so on within a certain limit. And suddenly the jinn is gone. That was not a jinn. That was just your diet. And sometimes you ask them a straight up question. Are you married? No. Do you want to marry a particular person? They keep quiet. Father is sitting there. That's the problem. He is the disaster. That is the jinn. The father is the jinn. Allahu Akbar. Allah protect us and grant us ease. May Allah open our doors. You know, I'm speaking from a lot of experience. I'm not joking with you. A lot of experience. We know what goes around. So you find your child is very sick and ill. Sometimes it is because of some form of imbalance within the home, not necessarily in the mind. But imbalance in the house then causes an imbalance in the brain. Then when your child becomes totally mental, requiring medication for the rest of their lives, who are you going to blame? Allahu Akbar, it was simple for you, but you made it tough on yourself. Look at how today we have only started speaking, but we are speaking so much of reality on the ground because this is why we do not live happily ever after. Wife after 10 years tells the husband, I never ever wanted to marry you. Do you know that? But it took you 10 years to tell me. And husband says, guess what? I was also forced. Now, what is the point? What is the point? Their parents are foolish. Man is telling his wife after so many years, I was forced. I didn't want to marry you. And the woman is saying, I didn't want to marry you. So who is responsible for not allowing the couple to live happily ever after? And at the same time, there are three couples that are saying the same thing to each other because that man, the why, the one he wanted to marry is telling the same statement to her husband. And that woman, the one whom she wanted to marry is telling the same statement to Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. This is called Illa tafaluhu takun fitnatun fil ardi wa fasadun arid. This is why the hadith says if you are not going to allow that marriage, there will be great chaos and fitna on earth. All marriages are breaking up. Today, when people get married, we need to ask, so when is it breaking? Allahu Akbar. Because more marriages, I was thinking that more marriages are breaking than happening. So someone might say, but that can't be the case. It can be the case because this year, if there have been 200 marriages and 300 divorces, those of last year are also divorcing now. Allahu Akbar. As time is progressing, there are people who are unhappy in marriage. If I were to tell you, my brothers and sisters, without exaggeration, that more than half of us sitting here have a problem at home, I don't think I would be lying. I'm sorry to say this. I'm very sorry. I apologize in advance. I might be wrong, but according to what I know, I think I've worded it carefully. I'm not saying that you are breaking or your marriage is broken, but we do not have a problem at home. I don't think so. I think more than half of us would, would, would admit if we had to, that we have a problem at home. Why? Because of something. What is the thing? Ask yourself, the day you were married and you said, yes, I accept her as my wife. The name of Allah was used. The verses were read. You don't even know the meaning of those verses up to today. And you led your life in a way that was not in that direction. So today you are sitting with a problem. Sin actually reduces the chances of living happily ever after. When you want to sin and you do not want to uh, be responsible, you will reduce the chances of living happily ever after. And when you were married, you were so happy. Are you as happy as you were that day today? If the answer is no, what went wrong? Diagnose it, change it. Let me quickly read for you the three verses that are read in Khutbatul Hajah, which is often repeated when it comes to Nikah. The first one. Ya واحدة وخلق منها زوجها 
وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا O oh you, O oh people, Allah starts by saying, O oh people, the beginning of Surah An-Nisa, be conscious of your maker, your Rabb, your nourisher, cherisher, sustainer, provider. Be conscious of the one who is in absolute control of every aspect of your existence, which means develop your piety. O oh people, be conscious of your maker, the one who created you from a single soul, who is Adam. And from it, he created Hawa, he created its spouse. And from the two of them, he caused the multitude to spread on the earth. From the two of them. Fear him or be conscious of him. And un understand you are answerable to him. Allah says, And be fearful of Allah. Be mindful of Allah. Be conscious of Allah. The one whose name you use. When you are asking one another or you want someone to believe you or you want to believe them, you want them to use the name of Allah. This verse is making mention of how sacred the name of Allah is. Be conscious of that Allah whose name you consider so sacred. Allahu Akbar. And be conscious of the wombs. What's the meaning of the wombs? The female, the women, your mother, your sister, your wife, your daughter. Be conscious of them and their right over you. Are you fulfilling it or not? Allahu Akbar. And Allah says, Inna Allah kana alaykum raqiban. Allah is very, very watchful over you. Raqib, someone who is watching very carefully, taking note of that which is going on. So behind closed doors, watch out how you treat your women. Be careful, your mother, your daughter, your wife, your spouse, meaning your, your sister and so on. Be careful, Allah says, I am watching. And Allah is all watchful. That is the first verse. Allah is 